In this video, I'm going to show you how to put an animated character into your video footage using Blender. And if you want to follow along with me in this tutorial, the link to download the footage is in the description below. So when you open up Blender, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert our footage into an image sequence. So come up to this plus icon, click it, scroll down to video editing and select video editing. Once you've done that, click and drag your footage into the video editing timeline. All right, perfect. I'm going to select the audio and I'm going to delete it because we don't need it. Next, I'm going to go right to the end frame. In this case, it will be 245 and I'm going to click this button and I'm going to set 245. All right, perfect. As you can see at the moment, the resolution I'm in is 1270 by 720. What I want to do is I want to work in full HD. So I'm going to change this to 1920, press tab by 1080 press enter. Next, I'm going to scale up our clip to fit the canvas resolution we just set. All you have to do is click on image, then select apply, then hit scale to fit. Our footage is now scaled up to full HD. Next, click on render properties, scroll down to color management, make sure your view transform is in standard like so, then click on output. And for all purposes, the file format I'm going to use is a JPEG sequence. I normally export in OpenEXR multi-layer. For this beginner tutorial, we're going to export in a JPEG. So click on JPEG and click this button to select the folder you want to save your image sequence to. I've already converted this into an image sequence, so I'm not going to do that. But just click this folder and then select where you want to store on your system your image sequence. And once that's done, press Control 12 or come over up here, select Render and click on Render Animation to export your image sequence. Once that's done, come over to the Motion Tracking tag by selecting this plus button, scrolling down to VFX and then selecting Motion Tracking. Then I'm going to click Open and navigate to where I stored my image sequence. And you can either select the first image of the image sequence and then click on open clip or you can press A to select all of them and click open clip. Now the first thing I'm going to do is on the left hand side I'm going to click track and I'm going to select set scene frames to set the beginning and the end of our clip. I'm going to click on prefetch to load the clip into our ramp for smooth playback and I'm just going to open this up a bit. And I'm going to change the motion model to perspective. I'm going to change the match to previous frame and I'm going to select normalize. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press shift left to go to the first frame. Then I'm going to click on detect features. And as you can see, we have tracking markers placed around our scene. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to click on this 12 down button where it says detect features and I'm going to set the distance to 80. That means I've decreased the distance of pixels between each marker and I'm going to change the threshold to 0.1 just so that we've got more markers on our screen. I'm going to change the margin to 32 and once that is done, I'm going to press Control T to track forward or you could just press this button right here to track forward. Perfect. Nice. Now you can delete these wayward tracks that don't fit the pattern that these other tracks are following. So just press delete, delete that, delete that. Actually, no, delete this one and delete this one. Perfect. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press A to select all my tracking markers and I'm going to press H to hide them. Then making sure I'm on the last frame, I'm going to click on detect features. Nice. And I'm going to track backwards. You can either press Control Shift T or you can click this button right here to track backwards. Nice. Now I am going to press Alt H to bring up all the tracking markers. I'm going to go into my solve tab and I'm going to select focal length, optical center and radial distortion. And for keyframe A and B, I want to select the two keyframes with the most motion. So as I'm scrolling through my footage, I'm going to say at frame 70 to frame 220. So 70 to 220. I believe there's the most motion throughout the clip. And I'm going to click on solve camera motion and we've got a solve error of 2.14. Now we want to aim for a solve error of below one pixel. Anything above that is unusable. Next, I'm going to go to the beginning of my clip by pressing shift and left. I'm going to click the clean up 12 down button and I'm going to select filter tracks. It's identified 46 problematic tracks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover my mouse over the clip. I'm going to press X and delete track. Next, I'm going to bring the cursor about halfway through my timeline to about frame 119 and I'm going to select filter tracks 
and it's identified three problematic tracks. So let's get rid of them. I'm going to press X and delete track to delete those three tracks. And again, go to 200, select filter tracks and go to the end, select filter tracks, zero tracks. I'm going to go back to the beginning of my clip and I'm going to click on solve camera motion again. And we have an error of 0.81, which is pretty good, but I think we can do better. So next to error, I want to select every single track that is above an error of two pixels. So I'm going to type in two, press enter, and then I'm going to click on clean tracks. And as you can see, it's highlighted several tracks that have an error above two pixels. So I'm going to press X and I'm going to delete them. And I'm going to click on solve camera motion again. And we have a solve error of 0.38 pixels which is fantastic i'm going to press a to select all my markers and then i'm going to press ctrl l to lock all of them so that when i select them i don't accidentally move the markers and throw the track off that's just what i like to do perfect now that that's done what i'm going to do is i'm going to go down to scene setup and select set as background and then select setup tracking scene nice next i'm going to set the floor so you need to select three tracking markers to do this. It's best to select three markers that are tracked along the floor so we can properly set the orientation of our ground plane. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to hold shift, select this one, and I'm going to hold shift and select this one. And I'm going to set that as the floor. And I'm going to select this marker and select set origin, which will be the middle of our scene. That's perfect for me. That's perfect. Now that that's done and complete, I'm going to go back into our layout tab. So come up over here, select layout. And I already know the scale of the ground plane and the human are too big. So I'm going to scale them both down. So select S or press S for scale and decrease. I'm going to do the same for the other. Press S and scale down. Then I'm going to press zero on my numpad to look through the camera. And if you don't have a numpad, come over to view, scroll down to camera, select active camera. I suggest you right click active camera and set a shortcut so you don't have to quickly jump in and out of the camera views rather than click on the panel a bunch of times. That's only if you don't have a numpad. So as you can see, the orientation of the ground plane is off. To fix that, go into the foreground collection, select camera, then click on the transform pivot point up here and select 3D cursor. Now we can change the rotation of our camera to make sure we are positioned correctly. So I'm going to press R and Z to rotate on the Z axis. And I want the red line or the X line going across our image. And I want the Y line, the green line going up and down or straight down this path. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Next, I'm going to rotate the Y axis to level the ground plane like so. Yeah, that's fine. Now I'm going to go back to bounding box center. So click this, then click this. And then I'm going to scale my plane down a bit to match up with the path like so. And I'm going to press space to see how the track is looking. Yep, that's good. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just, I'm going to increase the scale along the Y axis of this plane, which is going to be our shadow catcher. So I'm going to press S and then shift X. And that's fine, that's perfect. Now we've got our scene completely tracked. What we need to do is we need to jump over to Mixamo to add our animated character into our scene. So I'm going to jump right into Mixamo. If you don't know about Mixamo, it's a free site by Adobe where you can download all types of characters and animations to add to your projects. All you have to do is sign up to get full access. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select a character. I'm gonna select this mutant here. Perfect, I'm gonna go over to animations. I'm gonna type in walk because I just want my character walking through the scene and I'm going to choose the unarmed walking forward. I'm going to select it and yeah, that's fine for me. So I'm going to select download. I want it to be FBX format. I want to change the frames per second to 24 or you can change it to the FPS that your project is. I want it with skin and I want no keyframe reduction. Click on download. Once that's downloaded to your system, jump back into Blender, come over to file, scroll down to import and select FBX and double click the FBX file that you downloaded and saved onto your computer. And it's successfully imported into our scene. It's a bit large as you can see. So I'm gonna press S to scale it down. That's fine. I'm gonna delete this human I've got Go back into my camera. I'm gonna press play. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm gonna press Z to go into rendered mode. And if you go into rendered mode and you don't see the footage in the background, what you need to do is click on the render properties tab, select film, click on the film twirl down button and select transparent. Now you'll see the footage showing within the camera's background. Next, I'm gonna select the camera properties tab and uncheck depth of field to make sure it's turned off. 
as you can see our character is completely in the shadows so to make sure we can see him and he matches up with the lighting in our footage i'm going to add a hdri i actually have the polyhaven add-on installed into the asset browser but if you go to their website you can install a ton of free hdris to use in your project now i'm going to select this one because the lighting and time of day is similar to how it looks in the video clip and i'm gonna click it and drag it into the viewport and as you can see it's lighting up our character perfectly right now we can't see our character cast in any shadows even though we have the hdri light in it and that's because our shadow capture ground plane is in the wrong collection folder and i'm not too sure why it does this but i'm going to move the ground plane into the foreground collection like so and just like that the model is casting shadows on our ground plane again i don't know why but if it's left in the background folder the shadow capture won't pick up any shadows now if I press play you'll see the animation stops way before we get to the end of the clip. Now to make our animation walk forward continuously we are going to have to loop the animation and to do that it's pretty simple. Create another viewport on your left and to do that let me show you. Hover your mouse until you see a cross then click and drag to create another viewport. Click here and select graph editor then select the armature of the model. Come over to the graph editor and use the middle mouse button and the scroll wheel to get a good view of all our keyframes like so. Perfect. Okay, now I'm going to select everything but the blue line. This blue line represents the hip bone which controls where the model is in 3D space. We don't want to select that. Instead, I'm going to select everything else by clicking and dragging like so. Then press L on my keyboard to select all the keyframes that are linked to it. Once that's done, press Shift E and select Make Sight Click. Now our walking animation is seamlessly looping itself. And to make it move forward continuously, select any keyframe of this diagonal line or the Z line, the hip bone, which is, let me show you where the hip bone is. So if I select my armature, I come into the data armature and I go viewport display and I select in front. So this line here is this hip bone here, which controls the movement of the model. Come over to the graph editor, select it, press L to select all of it. Press shift E again and select linear extrapolation. So now when I come into my camera, I press space. The monster will continue walking right past the camera and that's exactly what we want i'm just going to deselect the armature so we don't really see it in front and that's perfect now we have a fully animated character within our live footage next to export it come over to the compositing tab now if you have this set up what i'm seeing now press g to move all this to the side now we don't need all of these so i'm going to select that press x get rid of it don't forget to click on the use nodes button and press f12 on your keyboard to render out a still image to see if your composite is looking okay and also to show the composed render behind our nodes like so next i'm going to go into the output tab on the right hand side and scroll down to output and click on this folder icon to select where you want to save your animation on your pc then under file format i'll normally use openexr but for this tutorial this beginner tutorial i'm going to select jpeg because it's the lowest quality and it plays back super fast in any other software and just quickly check your frame rate your frame start and frame end and lastly you can press ctrl 12 to render out your full animation or you can come up to here select render and click on render animation and that's it my name is Jermaine Grant hope you learned something new and i'll see you in the next one